Hello everyone! Today I am going to be making a lei using artificial flowers. So I am making this to go with this dress that you see off to the left in my normally used reference image area. And what this is, is it's for an event that I'm going to on Wednesday. And it is a birthday party in the parks. And the theme is Monsters on Vacation. And I'm wearing a spider dress that I made myself. It's the L'Amour from Charm Patterns, and it has a built-in bustier on the inside. So that way it can fit super well despite being strapless, and I don't have to worry about having any wardrobe malfunctions while I'm in the park having a great time with my friends. But it really needed one more tropical component. It needed a lay. And I wanted something that matched my outfit, in a way, but not like super matchy matchy, but I needed it to be in theme. So I decided to go and get some um, lilies because lilies are a morning flower. And I managed to get them in both white and an aqua color that really matches my dress nicely, but I don't want to leave them as they are. All right, I want to decorate the petals themselves before I actually put this on my leg. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the materials, right? So we got our flowers. I got six little bunches here. I don't know if it'll actually be enough. We'll wait and see. If not, I'll get some um, a little creative with my beadwork. So I've also got some beads here. Some of these are already pre, I already pre-pulled off of, but I have some more on standby. You'll also want a needle, but you'll want your needle to be thin enough or to go through your beads, but you'll also need the needle head to be wide enough for fishing line to go through. And you, you want some relatively strong fishing line. So that way, you know, it can take tear, you know, a little bit of damage going on and off and on and off your head without the beads and everything, you know, coming undone, right? So, and I've also got here some spiders just some cheap little spider rings we're going to attach these in there and of course standard caveat we're going to need some scissors and for the rings i've got e6000 and because there's e6000 i've also got q-tips so that way i can clean up the excess glue without making a big mess and for the actual decoration of the petals that i'm going to do I have got um, fa uh, black fabric paint, but if you don't have black fabric paint or don't have the color that you're wanting, you can also mix regular acrylic paint with fabric medium, and that should help hold it. I've also got my trusty palette here, so that way I can put the paint on something for my paint brushes. And I don't know if I'll use this or not, but I had it on hand, so we'll see how that goes. And obviously a cup of water, and I've also got a measuring tape, so that way I can measure how long I need my fishing line to be, to be effective. So, the first thing that we'll want to do is pull off our petals. So, with artificial flowers, usually you'll just see this little piece here and you can just pull up, right? And if you pull it apart a little bit, you can see that there's the hole in the center where the, the wire spike goes through, we're gonna feed this through twine, right? So we want this, 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 we want it just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off all the petals off here. And because I, like my flower is super like deep, like the actual, like shape of this part goes super wide. I'm probably not gonna use as many just because I still want them to be spaced enough to enjoy the pattern, All right? So we're done with this. I may or may not do anything with the green leaves. I don't think I will. So I'll set them aside because they may be useful in something else later. Not for this project though. So I'm gonna continue to deflower my plants here just peeling off the stem, the petals off the stem.
All right, so I've got my little stack of white, and I'm going to move that over to the side, and I'm going to kind of slide this stuff out of the way because I'm not. I'm going to decorate my my flowers before I make my lay. All right, now I'm going to peel off the aqua ones, and I was super excited to find such a good match to the color of my dress. Like that was a very exciting moment for me. It sh it shouldn't have been, but it, I I literally screamed in the aisle. And I was a little late hitting record on this, so if I chopped off the first part of my directions, you didn't miss anything. I was just going over the materials, and I'll link that up in the description when I go to post it and export it to YouTube. Okay, so we have deflowered all of the stems. We are done with these. We don't need these anymore. Not for this. But I think this could be a really cool, like, swamp witch kind of thing later. So I'll come back to this for another project. Mark my words, it'll be back, just not today, all right? So if you're wondering why I put this down, this is just freezer paper. I've done this to protect my work surface because paint has a tendency of getting everywhere, especially when you're not painting on something flat. So I wanted to protect my surface. Um, I've also got, I, I didn't mention this before, but I do also have access to some Sharpie oil-based um, markers here. I haven't used these on this, so I don't know how effective it would be, but if you're trying to do a lot of fine detail, something like this might be a good option for you as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some of my black fabric paint onto my little palette here. And I'm going to decorate these because I don't, I don't want them to stay one color. Like I want some differentiation here. And the brushes I've got out are a zero detail, a four round. I've actually got a rubber eye makeup brush. This might be useful because it doesn't have any, any actual bristles. It's all rubberized. So you can get some really fine detail work. And per my usual, I've actually also brought out my dotting tool just in case it comes in handy. I don't know if I'll use it, but I like to have it around. It's like having a BFF with me. So I'm gonna take my petal here and I'm gonna push my thumb down so that way it stays nice and open. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of smatter this on here at the edge. And kind of outline the petal. because I don't want the whole thing to be aqua. We, we kind of want these to look sort of like flowers that have been kind of left at a, at a tomb. Like we're, we're talking about like beloved death here at this point, Not, nothing like, you know, super like mainstream or standard. It, it's weird, it's design. I want this to be weird. This is kind of a little bit of a dark direction for my lay because it's part of my, my, uh, my character. I haven't given her a name yet, so if you've got ideas. All right, so I've outlined it, but I'm gonna flick some lines at the end, kind of in there like this. So that way you can kind of, it looks kind of weird with one petal, but when I do the whole thing, this is gonna look a lot more natural. And you'll see that your paint is gonna go through. We want this. It'll help create some texture and dimension. You may wanna actually play that up a little bit and add a little paint to the outside, just so that way that color is super consistent and dark. And it may be a cool idea just to brush some lighter paint just on the outside so it kind of looks like it's floating around in there. So we're gonna continue going around our, our petal. Now you may not be able to always get to it depending on what kind of flower you're using. Um, so you'll just want to cover it as best you can, but this there's going to be so much of these and they're going to be so packed that don't worry if something isn't exactly perfect. Illusion will be your best friend here. All 
And this is where it comes in handy to have like your little mat down so that way you can push it flat and paint down on the surface. And because it's freezer paper, it's got a wax side, so it's not gonna bleed through to my under surface. And I can kind of peel that petal away to get a little more down into where I was trying to work. Right, and again, I'm just kind of gonna toss some, some black down in there, kind of facing towards the inside. And you can see how this is kind of taking shape a little bit. Like it's, it's, it's looking a little more exotic. Now, if you do do this method and you push down, like I said, it will bleed through your, your artificial flower. So it will kind of show a smattering, but like I said, this is something that's designed by the very nature to be sort of imperfect looking. So that's actually in your favor. Um, anything that is perfectly symmetrical or tidy would never exist in nature. Not that we're suggesting this color flower is natural at all, but we do, it definitely makes it look better quality if it is irregular. And that's true for anything regarding flowers. The more irregular or asymmetrical or imperfect it is, the better your result is actually going to be. So while you're freaking out that you didn't perfectly outline it, it's going to be a million times better because you didn't. All right, so we've got our little bit of an outline there, and now I'm going to just kind of flick down towards the center, kind of dry brushing it in there like that. And you can see how this is really kind of taking shape. All right, and I'm going to do a little bit of work on the outside. So that way it can be as pretty because parts of the outside will show in this method. Right. Now I'm going to go on to the next petal. If you're alternating colors, I recommend you paint them in alteration as well. Um, so that way the drying order as you're wanting to place them on there, they're drying as you're ready to work on them and push them on your lay. So that way your overall process is faster. All right? Just a little bit of a time-saving thought process. All right, so we've kind of got that one in. And you can see it's still clearly an aqua flower, but we've definitely like elevated this. We've made it look dangerous. We've made this poisonous. We've made it like mischievously toxic. You know, I like that phrase, mischievously toxic. That is super fun to say. It is probably now I'm like my favorite personality trait. I am mischievously toxic. No, 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 not really. I am sunshine. I am rainbows. I just really like to flirt with the dark side. I am still working on my sketch for tomorrow's painting stream. I haven't totally decided on a layout, but I do have my theme settled. It will be a trans Frankenstein's monster and Bride of Frankenstein. I just don't know in what position I'm going to be placing them or what the angle is going to be, but I really like it as a concept and I started sketching it out last night, but I wasn't super happy with it. So I'm going to try again off camera after I'm done making my lay for Wednesday's event. So, you know, we should see that probably up on Patreon tonight at some point. Super excited about that. I love it when a new, um, a new traceable goes live. And the traceables are just there to help you. They're just a tool. They're just a guideline. You don't have to be able to draw to enjoy arts. Like you should always be able to just have fun, even if you don't have absolutely every tool at your disposal. All right, so here we go. We've got our first kind of flower done. She is looking bomb. So I'm gonna set her aside to dry. And I think I'm going to lay out another sheet of freezer paper for the ones that I'm working on. So that way I still have workspace. So give me just a second.
All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and do a white one. Now for my white ones, I want to do something maybe a tiny bit different. Maybe for these, I want to do like dots or something a little, a little different. So for these, instead, what I'm going to do is just do like this top little bit at the tips. And then I'm just going to do little dots. And I'm going to do it kind of down to a point like that. All right, and we'll go ahead and start the next one. And I'm trying not to overdo it like for these I want the because my dress is mostly aqua is the reason why I went with a bolder design on my aqua but because white is only like flirted with on my dress it's there as like a a pop and accent I do want the white to stick out more on my lay so that way it gives the aqua a chance to shine like the dress itself because I put a lot of time into that dress. I don't know if you're following along on Instagram with that, but that was a journey. That dress was a journey and it deserves to shine. It deserves all of the opportunity to shine. And so you can see kind of where I'm going with this. It's there to help the flower be a little more interesting. It's not taking away from it, but it's just adding another little dimension to it. And you can see that it's visible from the other side, but you'll also want to touch up on the back side at the tip, just so that way it is nice and vibrant on both sides of your artificial flower. I wouldn't say touch the dots, but definitely just a little around the top of your little tracing. Or if you want to do a different kind of design altogether, I mean, these there's tons of options out there. If you've got a steady hand, you can draw anything inside these petals. You could, oh, I like the idea of putting like um, words of affirmation or character traits that you possess or want to possess, or like this could totally be like a meditation thing too. Like it could be a vision board, a vision board as an accessory. I'm here for it. Totally here for that. All right, we're moving right along. Oh, look how dope that's looking right now. I am so excited. Oh my goodness. And like I said, if you don't have fabric paint, um, fabric medium is a great alternative. Puffy paint, I could imagine that being really cool as well, it, adding a little bit of texture. I am generally not a fan because I don't like, I don't like the way it messes with seams if you're painting something and then you've got to sew a seam with it there. But I can totally see that being a great use case in for this though. So if you have that on hand, totally, you know, experiment with it. And I'm just kind of touching up my ends over here. And I don't think I'm going to wind up doing every flower in each color like exactly the same style. I may switch it up a little bit. I don't know. We'll see a little bit. Maybe a couple of different designs just for some variety and interest. All right. And you may occasionally get a situation where your petal has been glued shut. So we're going to take advantage of this and we're going to let it be its cute little visual interest. And I'm still going to outline the way it is. Because like I said, once it's, you know, on the lay and it's mixed with everything else, it's going to have a the individual flowers won't matter so much as how they look together as a whole. But on this one, I will do a couple on the back just because they're going to show through. Just to give it a little better balance. And right, I've got too much paint on my brush. So I need to rinse it. Off. 
and then one last petal, and then I'll move on to another aqua one. I didn't count how many of these I had. Maybe I should have, but we'll see. We'll, 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 we'll see how it goes. I am all about the let's, let's just do it and figure it out later. It's fine. Winging it for the win. May live to regret those words, but we'll see. All right, and this one I'm going to count as done, so I'm going to go ahead and put it over in my done area. All right, so let's take another aqua one. And I think for this, what I might do is something just a touch different. I think maybe I will try doing, seeing if I've got enough control with this brush to maybe do some loose spider webs. So I'm gonna draw a line out the center and I'll line up the sides there. And I'm just going to do little U's. All right, yeah, I don't have enough control with that brush, but maybe I can do it with a little rubber makeup brush. Maybe that'll do. I don't have, it doesn't get enough paint on there. So that won't work. Strike out. Well, not every idea is going to be a winner. And you can see that because I added water on there, it's bleeding a little bit. And that's okay for this one. We'll let that be a design choice. Right. And it's a little bit sloppy, but that's okay. All right, I'll move on to the next one. And this one, I'm not going to go as deep. I'm probably only going to go like to there. This is one that I'll probably stick one of my little spiders in. And I think just to make it a little interesting, we'll put a couple of little dots. It's just because I feel like it's a little plain. And now for the next one. I'm gonna let that one come a little lower down. I'm gonna have a little bit of a moment. And like I said, this doesn't need to be perfect because it's going to be just one small piece of many. It is going to work in concert with everything else. All right, so we've got a little bit going on here. All right, I'm like, I'm liking it. I'm, 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 I'm not hating it. it unusual design choice that I've made here but you know every idea is valid and sometimes you just got to experiment and see what happens I think for the next white one I'm gonna do stripes I think that would be exciting. 
and on this one because there's not a lot showing in the center I'm going to do a couple of dots from the back I cannot wait to be this monster on vacation. Oh my goodness, she's gonna be so awesome. The hat I made for this, um, I did some embroidery with, and I did the same thing on the bag. So I've definitely got like a strong, like 1950s spider vibe going on. I themed it from the, I think it was 1953 or 1955 movie Tarantula. Giant spiders. You know what's terrifying is I hate spiders, but I love decorating with them at Halloween. Like, it's a big feature thing for me. I love it. And for your awareness, fabric paint is a little more runny than acrylic paint. So if you're used to using acrylic paint, this is going to behave a little different. Just FYI, if it's a new field for you. I love to repaint shoes with leather paint. That is so much fun. I don't have any shoes that have, that are starting to bite the dust or I'd be already designing like spiderweb themed shoes to go with this. Which would be so dope, but maybe I'll make like cute little shoe covers. I do have some aqua converses which isn't quite as cute as like an espadrille, but you know, maybe we'll do it. We'll see. I haven't, I haven't altogether decided. All right. So I'm making a couple of final like little dot choices. And then this one is finished. Hi, Telly. How are you doing? I am fabulous. I decided to surprise myself and work on this on stream just to see how it would feel working at the space like this. I'm not sure if I like it yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, I think for this one, I wanna do stripes. And I'm thinking to do that, I'm gonna need to lay it down flat a little bit and really force this open. Otherwise, it's just going to be too hard to get a, a, an even remotely clean line. Uh, I'm not, maybe not clean. We're just going to aim for presentable stripes. Because remember, this is going to go on a lay. It's going to be smushed against a whole bunch of other flowers. So the individual like content of the flower isn't going to matter so much. But overall, like the sum of everything, it's going to look so awesome. Maybe I'll need to make like a Beetlejuice one. Lime green and black, like a sandworm. Ooh, maybe with black light. Oh, I totally want to do that now. Love Beetlejuice. All right, to be fair, I love all um, Tim Burton movies. I am just a big fan of Tim Burton in general. He is amazing. All right, now I'm going to force open the next one. Infectionary is asleep right now, so I am very quietly keeping myself busy while he's resting. Some much needed, much overdue rest. I'm kind of jealous. Ah! I lost control of the flower. I did start working on the theme for tomorrow. I did decide that I would do like a trans Frankenstein's monster and Bride of Frankenstein, but I'm still working out the sketch. I tried something yesterday and it 
it disappointed me. Like it let me down. My my drawing skills let me down and I had a little through a little small pity party yesterday. And then I was like, you know what? I'll try again fresh tomorrow with a different like positioning of the heads. I was trying to do this really cute like kissing side profile shot, but I just couldn't get the positioning of the ears right. And it, it I didn't want to let I didn't want to let the art down. I didn't want to let the vision I had in my head down. So I had to keep I have to I have to give it another try. But I might do the execution just a little bit different. But you can see this is kind of looking super creepy. I love it. I'm going to be wearing this with the dress you see offside of my reference image area uh, for my monsters on vacation look. So I have to have like a a creepy lay to go with this dress. Like it, it needed one more big accessory. I hope I have enough flowers to do my lay. If not, I'm going to have to like pilfer something from a flower arrangement I already have. All right, and because I can't get all the way down on this one, and these are really clear, I'm going to continue the line on the back side because you'll see the hint of it on the inside. Glories in this case of working with cheap synthetic flowers is there is a lot you can do to dress these up and make them interesting. And I'm going to actually include some extra lines from the back that will look sort of like faint on the inside. We're going to take advantage of the material that these are made out of in our favor to do something interesting. I still got to work out what I'm going to wear for my necklace. I think I might break out the thing I wore for my Halloween wedding. It has like these skeleton hands on it. But I'm undecided. I'm going to work that out probably, probably on Monday. Like work it out in my head how I want to do that. All right, and we're almost done with this one, and then we'll do another aqua colored one. I can't stress how much I love the color aqua. Like, it is a favorite. My house is turquoise. My car is aqua. If I had it my way, my entire, like, all of my kitchen appliances would be, like, 1950s aqua. Oh, I love, I love those shades right in between blue and green. All right, so we've got our stripy flower. Set that one aside in the drying area. And I think I'm ready to repeat the first design I did in my aqua color, kind of outlining the outside and creating like this toxic happiness. I love that concept. Toxic happiness. Aggressive happiness. Like, go for it. Should always be happy. Or try to always be happy. Try to see the best in every situation. It just makes the things that go wrong easier to deal with. All right, and I'm going to these don't press open as nicely because they sealed down the flowers together. So I don't know how well this doing the green ones is going to go. There's a lot less mobility to get to the center. So it's kind of limiting my options there, but we'll make it work. So I've got it kind of outlined and I'm going to flick down from the top, right? You want to leave the bulk of the dark green in the center alone, but we do want to kind of suggest that something creepy is happening here, like some magic voodoo. Something sinister is occurring. They did the Gertie pattern release on the first. It's this adorable knit skirt that has like a Cleopatra drape in the front. 
like those kind of costumes and it gives me such a strong Egyptian vibe that I cannot wait to make a Halloween costume out of it. Although um, when she releases the tutorial on how to do the wrapped top, it looks so much like a Malibu Barbie. I just can't. So I'm waiting to make it because I only have four yards of that fabric. And uh, I want to be able to make sure that if I have the choice to do the long or the short skirt version of it, that I have enough to do that cute little, like, it's a giant rectangle that you basically tie around your, your bodice. Uh, but it's, like, super lifting because of the way it's tied. And I only have four yards of this pink stuff. And the long skirt version takes three yards. And the short one takes two. But if I can get the long version out of that and the cute little wrap top, game. Like, game. I cannot wait. I would totally wear that for the Barbie movie. I wasn't super into Barbie as a kid. And there are some problematic things with the content. But I, I love her as a, like... A concept like the fact that they have she's got so many different kinds of jobs this the fact that they've represented her in so many new ways and you know there's they've built the brand better like and I'm excited about that for the next generation and you can see we've got something kind of kind of happening here and I'm going to touch up the outside a little bit because I want the edges to be like super dark no matter what direction this winds up laying on my lay All right, so kind of touching up the ends there right, and continuing on. Are you doing anything fun today, Telly? Okay, and I'm gonna push this down here to make it easier to get the edge. Oh, that's cool. I sometimes forget that the seasons are are in opposition over there, but that was that is so dope. I was actually working on a winter coat in March, even though for us it only is really very cold from like December to beginning of March, and I define very cold very loosely. Ooh, tea and bread. Mmm. What kind of tea? What kind of tea? Tell me about the tea stash. I love tea. I did not grab any sippy sippy before sitting down to do this, which may have been a mild mistake, but we'll power through. We'll make it work. I am not great with hydration. I'm so horrible about that. Oh, you want to try something new? Nice. I have to make it to the store at some point tomorrow. Ooh, something with flowers. Ooh, I like hibiscus tea. Hibiscus tea is nice. If you use a flower, um, ooh, yes. I love all things pumpkin. It's my one basic bitch, uh, you know, characteristic. I love all things pumpkin. But I loved pumpkin before it was like an intense popular thing. It was the first thing I learned to bake with my mom. And it's still at this point the only recipe I can recite offhand by rote um, from my family's cookbook. My mom made me a special cookbook with all of our holiday recipes in it. Um, so that way when I was by myself or after she's gone, I'd be able to make all the family recipes. And I learned to bake pumpkin pie when I was probably about four years old. And we've got a pretty, we do like a pretty hearty pumpkin pie. It's very flavorful. It's um, a very thicker consistency than like a store-bought pumpkin pie, which has like this weird soupy, creamy kind of texture. Oh, well, I guess that would make sense because Halloween isn't as big. And a lot of the times those two things come hand in hand. So what is considered like the basic bitch thing over there? I I have to admit because of where when I visited, I stayed in this, you know, a super touristy area. 
I, I didn't get to see a whole lot of what was typical. So what is considered like super normy as far as a flavor is concerned. Okay, so we've got this one done. If I had this in pink, it would almost make me think of like the magical flower from Rapunzel. Do it in like a gold. Ooh, I can see that something happening in the future. All right, now we're gonna tackle another white one. And I think for this, I think I'm just going to flick up a few times from the center here. Something a little more basic. I really want, I don't want to overdo it with the white ones. I want them to be super noticeable all on their own. I don't want to defend, you know, ruin the color so very much. And you can see on this one, they, the way this one was formed, it's kind of stuck in there. So I'm going to take advantage of this and use it as a way to like shadow back out color on one side. So I'm going to highlight the edge there. So that way when it goes on the lay, if it, depending on what direction, it doesn't look as strange. Okay. All right. Avocado. That makes sense. Um, avocado here is super trendy with um, foodies and like health, health oriented people. Um, I got to admit, I don't really get the fascination with it. It's green. Um, I'm not into things that are green, <laughs> mostly because that means it's healthy and I am not here for that. I am here for sweets. I want all the sweets. And I think for this, this, this flower, I'm going to alternate between doing a smattering in the middle and, and kind of doing something on the rim. All right. Yeah. That's super popular here for like a, um, what's, what's the word? A yuppie breakfast. Yeah. Super, super popular for like a rich young person's breakfast. Like if you're going to one of those kind of more expensive sit down breakfast cafes, Me, I'm more into my traditional breakfast. I want my waffles. I don't even want syrup on them. I just want the waffles with just the slightest smear of butter. Not overwhelming, because I'm not big on butter, but just, just enough to where it's not dry, basically. That makes me so sad. Oh my goodness, waffles are amazing. I actually was visiting the town I spent most of my years growing up in. I was there for a work workshop and it was super nostalgic to be like in my, in the town I grew up in where I went to school and they had a waffle house there. And I was like, yep, we're doing this. I was, I was like an hour early to my workshop just so I could stop at waffle house and enjoy that. It was, it's so synonymous with my youth. I can't imagine like a world without it. If, if, if I was to be pressed for like to state a favorite food, it probably would be waffles. All right. So we've got kind of a little something going on here. All right. Very happy with that. Very happy with that. I'm going to set that over to dry. Ooh. Okay. That, you know what? That makes sense. It not being a standard breakfast. I was kind of thrown with what um, the standard breakfast was in the United Kingdom when I was there for a couple of days. Like the, I don't, I don't consume bacon cause I'm Jewish, but 
Oh, I have. I don't know what I want to do with this one. Uh, you know, let's do this. Maybe the spider web thing again. Let's do spider webs. I'm probably gonna have to put more paint on my palette. I really hope it doesn't rain next week on event day. Super nervous about it being raining. Cause we'll be we're a, we just started our hurricane season and Florida summer means that you can experience rain every day at two o'clock. You could almost set your watch to it. What all countries have you visited, Telly? I can't say that I'm a super world traveler. I've only been to three other countries. I'd like to see more, but life has a way of getting in the way of the things you enjoy, doesn't it? That, and then I'd have to figure out how to pack up and take my sewing machine with me, because there's no way I could go a whole vacation without sewing. Maybe I'd have to switch to like hand quilting or embroidery. At minimum to like wind down after spending such an exciting day visiting someplace to just relax and reset a little bit like recenter myself sewing is sort of like my zen experience <laughs> like i don't know who i'd be without it all right so i'm going to stick a little more paint on my palette and again, I'm just using Tulip Soft Fabric Paint for this. And the reason I'm using this is because it's nice and easy to work with. It's really thin, so it's easy to get, you know, smaller lines in. And even though I'm using a zero detail brush, because of what I'm doing, this is already really hard to work with. Oh, Singapore and Fiji? Oh, I can't even pronounce some of those, but that's epic. I am so jealous. I still really want to visit Greece. I have an unnatural obsession with Greek mythology, probably because I'm a history major, but I love it. I love it so much. I also think I'd like to um, see more of like Ireland because I didn't get to do that because I wasn't I wasn't in the United Kingdom for long enough. So I definitely would like to see Ireland castles. Oh my God, castles! I love castles. Yes, I did Lon London for Christmas, and no one does christmas quite like they do and i mean i say this as a person who doesn't celebrate christmas anymore I, I grew up in a christian household but somewhere along the line you know decisions were made and i found my found my beliefs in judaism but i still have like this conflicting feeling in my heart around christmas it gets it's get it's kind of sad because sometimes you're mourning those traditions because you no longer do them, but at the same time you're relieved that you're not doing them because there's so much work. So you take the time instead to really enjoy the season, instead of trying to rush to do all of the things. And I do like that aspect of Judaism that it kind of forces you to live more in the moment. That isn't 
it isn't about all the things that you get done. It's about how you are with people. And I do love that as an emphasis on something. But there is something special about all of the shops and the storefronts and the fabric and the, yeah, I'll even say I even like the Christmas carols on occasion. I just can't do them on repeat. Like, I can probably listen to the same Christmas song about 10 times in a week before it's like, okay, can can we can we roll it over to something else? But um, I love that at Universal Studios this last Christmas, they had, I want to carbon date myself here, they had the Hanson soundtrack, Hanson snowed in playing as part of their Christmas music. And um, that was really good for me because I remember playing that on a tape cassette. That's right, a tape cassette and very fond memories kind of rolled in with that. And they weren't like ones that were attached to sad memories. So they didn't spawn sad feelings. They were just like joyful memories. And I love that, love that. That was so cool. All right, we got one more petal left and then this one is finished. I have a feeling this light is going to take me a while. I have a lot of petals left. I may, I may have overcommitted myself. I may have overcommitted myself. But I'm already doing it, so now I have to finish. Maybe I'll go for something a little less um, and intense after this. Maybe these will be like special ones. Maybe I'll do more like flicking on the others. Flicking in dots, that kind of thing have just enough for my little spiders. So I am going to include some like sp spiders in there. If they don't all run away from me. All right. I think I'm going to do another dotted one. So I really liked the way that came out. So I'm going to do that for these. It, I've also got a couple of sewing projects that I've got cut out that I might try experiment with and maybe try to like work on on stream a little later. Um, as a separate stream, I'm still kind of working out the kinks on that. We'll see how that goes. And I'm in the process of kind of setting up a Discord, but I'm not sure if I'm going to wind up really using it. But I did create one so that way it's ready if I decide I want to go that route. I'm not sure what the interest level in that would be. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. I have started updating my project lists on Textilia. It's a, a website I use to keep track of all of my sewing projects so that way I can queue them up and save up all of the pattern details and the things I want to adjust on them. I think I am now up to 36 projects that I have to finish before the end of this year. Yes. So I wish that there was a larger like sewing community like website where people post all their makes, but there isn't really like um, a, a large a large database of that. I wish it would like there's one out there for knitters and crocheters, but it isn't hasn't really taken off as a concept for sewing yet. And I really wish it would so that way you could post all your makes and people could be like, Oh, well, how did you do this? How did you get past this tricky part? You know, as more of a community aspect, rather than just the way I use it as a queuing aspect. Um, 
and you can see I think I've got a link to that on my link tree for my textilia all the things that I've got planned and in the works and I like to use some very light weight like graphic programs to kind of overlay the line art with the fabric so I can get a rough idea of what it would look like in completion so that way I can even see if I want to continue that project like it helps you get excited for it and when I did the line art for the dress in my reference photo I like lost my marbles I was like oh I'm so here for this I'm so ready I want to get into it right now like Oh, so epic. And what's funny is that fabric was purchased last Halloween with the intent to make like a double circle skirt. And a double circle skirt is exactly what it sounds like. It is a skirt that is comprised of two whole circles that you cut the center out at half your waist. So that way, when you put them together, it forms the whole circle for your waist. And it has a, a super like wavy effect. There's so much fabric. It's great for a spinning video. I had exactly one reel on Instagram go viral, and it was such a stupid clip. It was um, me spinning in a scar dress I had made from a tablecloth. All right, so I got another one of these done. Oh, right. And I think for this one, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do stripes. I think I'm going to do stripes on this. Actually, no, I'm going to go a little more like I did the first one. I'm just going to outline it and flick down. I need to think less about this. I need to let it be a little more automatic, a little more natural. I don't want them to all look too, too planned in the same. I want them to feel more organic, even though they are silk flowers. And this is clearly not a thing that exists in nature, but I want to trick your mind into believing it does. And that means they have to be super irregular and the more sloppy it is actually, the better off it is. Another really cool technique you can do, I don't have um, any gloves for this today, but if you put paint on a, um, little trash bag or like grocery bag and you throw it, it, the flower inside the trash bag with the paint and scumble it around, it has this really cool modeled effect that you can recreate. And I think for my painting tomorrow, I'm gonna do some multimedia in there. I think I wanna do, a a thing where you where you can print off the printable the traceable and affix it directly to the canvas and I think I want to use some modeling paste and some um, some gel medium I think I think I want to take it to a multimedia level because I want to be able to like do like the horror makeup on there so if I use the modeling paste to create like the edges of an open wound, I can make it look like it's running blood. Like for a couple of the scars that exist on the face of Bride, and Frank Bride of Frankenstein and of Frankenstein's monster. And I think I may also want to like rewatch the, um, I think it's 1934, the 1934 classic version of Bride of Frankenstein. Because I think I want to go back to the source material a little bit and look at her hair so that way I can decide on maybe I want to use some like leather cording in her hair so it looks super coily and raised I think I think I want to take this someplace a little more fun something interesting All right, so we've got one of these done. The flowers are never ending. Oh my goodness. This is gonna wind up being a lot longer than I thought it was gonna be. 
let's see let's do let's do a stripe let's do a stripe I'm getting super sloppy with this. Oh my goodness. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> but you know, I kinda like I kinda I kinda like this like weird design I've got going on here. And thankfully, because they're gonna be so packed up close together, it won't be as as noticeable that I'm basically putting less than like zero effort into making these lines look nice. I was starting to watch a couple of other like arts and crafts streamers recently trying to get some like ideas of how to do the cameras and I, I gotta admit I'm a, a little bit intimidated I'm a little bit intimidated I I don't know how well that's gonna work but we'll we'll figure it out Ooh, you know I can almost do this as a concept for like tiger stripes ooh tiger lily it's very easy for me to get distracted when i'm thinking about like characters and different ways to do things i get really into it and then they starts to jade daisy chain just like all over the place i still really like the idea of doing like a technicolor black light version of this for like beetlejuice i'm i'm still really into that idea i'm going to have to make that a reality at some point all right, so we've got a quick little stripey stripe. How many of these do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Oh man! All right, I'm gonna be at this. Yes, yes. I never, I hate anything to be wasted. Everything gets reused. Like I was already thinking about the, the actual spikes. I'm thinking I'm going to pull the leaves off and it's going to be like a swamp witch crown later. Or it may be like a, you know, the, the green parts that people put on their wrist for like late for luau's, but I, I honestly think it's going to wind up being a swamp witch thing for like Halloween Horror Nights. Let's see. Let's do, let's do dots for this one. Maybe I haven't done any dots on an aqua one. And I'll kind of trace the top up here a little bit. So that way it doesn't blend in with the dress when I'm wearing this as a necklace on top of it. I want it to stand out. Are luau's like a popular party theme over there like it is here? Like, like at the party store during I mean, I imagine not right now because because winter, but when you do experience summer, is luau like a popular theme? Huh. All right. So something else that's like country specific that is super common here, as is the idea of like a tiki bar. Oh, not a ton of party stores. So, all right, as a question, is like giving like balloons for birthdays and whatnot something that's really common? And if that's common, where do you get them from?
because here you would normally source source that kind of thing at a party store or at a some grocery stores have them like helium balloons oh, okay all right so now i got a follow-up question since party stores aren't so much a thing and it seems like it's not relatively common for stores to carry them are, are birthday celebrations not as common? Because if so, I want to move there. Oh, okay. Um, there used to be, Walmarts here didn't used to actually sell food. It used to just be like home stuff, non-perishables. So that sounds like what, what Walmarts used to be before they went to being like superstores. Okay. All right, that's fair. So that's, all right, that's good to know. That is something that is probably cultural specific. I am kind of here for that because that's part of what makes parties so expensive is all of the theme decor games, uh, favors and et cetera. Like it adds up. Oh, I remember things like that when I was a kid. Um, they had like indoor jungle gyms and um, trampoline parks and things like that, but they were all inside. But I honestly thought those were popular here because Florida is hot and not everyone can handle the heat. But maybe that is more of an influence from our... our um, are visiting people that come to stay. That's cool though. Okay. Like, like, all right. I, I get that. That's like your, your standard kid's birthday party. The, the coned hat with the elastic that goes under the chin and maybe banners or like, just like a happy birthday banner or nothing, nothing too crazy. Okay. Sign me up. I'm ready to move. I actually am not big on celebrating my birthday. Um, for me, my birthday kind of lines up with the anniversary of my brother's passing. And so for me, it's more of a sad day than like an excited day. And we never really celebrated my birthday much growing up um, because it falls at the end of December. And because of Christmas and New Year's and everything else, Birthdays were never really prioritized. And with that in mind, it just kind of became kind of sad. Like, okay, you're a year older and, and you know, it's not really a celebration of anything. So instead for me, um, when I want to celebrate my young, another year around the sun, I celebrate the day I was diagnosed with heart valve disease. So I celebrate in March. I celebrate March 20th, the first day of spring, and it was kind of a sad day for me when I was first diagnosed. It was some three and some change months after my brother had passed away. He was in his early 40s and he had um, several coronary heart issues. Um, he'd had a heart attack. He was a long haul truck driver and it was a thing where, you know, I started, I had just started to run like as a hobby and I wasn't getting any better. Like I was horrible, horrible. I was puking, walking a 16 minute mile and it never got better. So after my brother passed, I went in to see the, oh, I should be painting. Uh, <laughs> I just went in to see the cardiologist and they're like, hey, you know, by the way, your heart valves are all leaky. And, you know, your body is double pumping blood to do the most basic of tasks. So you need to kind of chill with all of your physical activities. You need to relax. You need to stop trying to do so much, which was so hard. I was 26 when I was diagnosed. It was a really difficult time. And, you know, all my friends were getting married. They were having kids. They were doing these running endeavors and you know i kind of felt a little out of step with the world at the time 
Um, but since then, since then, I've definitely come a long way. I have done two half marathons myself. I'm very proud. You know, I did it once. It was horrible, but it was amazing. I did the, the wine and dine half at Disney. And, uh, you know, with anything else, if someone tells you you can't do something, you do it twice and take pictures. So naturally, I had to do it a second time. And it was the best. And I... I would never take, I would, I wouldn't take my diagnosis away from me. Like if there was a way to get rid of it, um, I probably wouldn't because it has definitely led to me making better decisions about my life, what's important, what's not important. And then it's okay to be at a different place in your life than the rest of your peers. Thank you. Um, they were hard lessons won. They were hard lessons won, but it was it was it was worth it. It was worth it. Um, all good things. All good things. Tough things, but good things. And now I like to tell people when they get diagnosed with hard hard conditions that you know it doesn't have to be like this big horrible thing that has happened to you. Let it evolve you. Yes. Yes. Evolution to your personal being, your personal happiness never comes without some kind of turmoil or strife or obstacle. The best growth comes from challenges. The best growth definitely comes from challenges. And I've definitely been challenged more than most. Um, some days are definitely harder than others. I need to get back on track with my physical exercise. Otherwise, I'll have to go back on medication. And I really don't want to do that um, because it makes me so sleepy all the time. And it feels like you're sleeping through your life. But, and, you know, I want to be present. I want to be here for the everything. I want to see it all. I want to experience it all. I can't sew if I'm asleep. I mean, you know slip my finger through the needle or something and that would be horrible i'm actually really excited for my mom oh oh man yes that is that is definitely a massive struggle i have definitely i don't have that exact problem but i've experienced pain that is similar and have spent countless hours at the lady doctor to deal with all of those kinds of, of issues and trauma and pain. And um, when I was there the last time, they had told me that I needed to start doing more exercises or they were not going to be able to do any more examinations on me because I was literally like fighting them to avoid the exam because <laughs> it was so painful. Oh, yes, yes. It is hard on your body and your brain to process all of the changes. And just like um, the mental toll of knowing that there's this thing going on and you have to be out for it. And then there are, you know, you have to sign all these waivers. And that can be really super scary. They're telling you that things could go wrong. Things could not go as planned and you're supposed to be okay with it. And yes, it's so important to stay positive. So important. Um, my coworker was just diagnosed with breast cancer. And this has been like a super hard thing to handle at work because my friend had just passed away from cancer. And cancer is a very prevalent thing in my family. I have an aunt that has had brain stem cancer, uh, Horner's disease, which is sort of a cancer of the eye and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And that's just, I, my mom was had a ton of siblings. And I can't say that there's a single one of them that is sufficiently healthy. <laughs> right. Yes. Being sad about it doesn't change the, the experience. It's, it's still going to be there waiting for you. That is a super positive way to look at that.
Okay, and I think I'm going to add a couple of dots down here at the bottom. Just because. I don't know if they'll even show up, but you never know. Plan for worst case scenario. That makes sense. And that way you can control your movements. Um, I imagine sometimes even some clothing can probably be really uncomfortable. Especially anything that goes across the midsection. I have a friend in Maine that has, um, oh, I lost the word. My brain will circle back to it when it's like, when it's unimportant. PJs are really nice. PJs are really nice. They're, they, they definitely, I have a couple of favorite pajamas and they're, this is going to sound nuts, but they're kind of glamorous, but they're so comfy. I did, I made them earlier this year for a girl's weekend and they're so loose, but I feel like a Grecian goddess when I wear them. So even though they're loungy, they're pretty. And I did another one that was sort of like loosely themed on the Prisoner of Azkaban uniform, like their gray stripes. And then I realized directly afterwards, that instead of just looking like that, they also sort of looked like, um, the boy in the striped pajamas and I got a little bit like emotional with that because it was not long after like Holocaust Remembrance Day but still super love them they're still super comfy I made those from bed sheets so you know they're soft on your skin because you're already designed to sleep on them Yes, yes. I love making clothes out of sheets. As long as they're like good quality sheets, not like those really crappy like microfiber sheets, but like nice quality, you know, better than 450 thread count. They feel almost like satin against your skin. Crazy for bed sheets. I made a Renaissance dress, or 18th century dress, not Renaissance, excuse me wrong terminology. I made an 18th century dress using bed sheets that is so comfy and it's so elegant. I can't wait to wear it to the run fair in November. I think I might actually decide to enter a um one of the costume competitions. I haven't actually entered one before. As surprising as that may be. been kind of anxious about it but yes yes um, there are definitely some really cute free simple patterns for pajamas out there um, the Harlow pajama that I made from my bed sheets is from charmpatterns.com and it's called the Harlow and it's free it's just a loose pair of elastic pants but you can you know crop them off and make them shorter if you want and it has this cute little um, short sleeve top that has a little pleat at the front so that way it does it's not it's so it's not loose at the neckline but it's not tight across the bust it's a cute little detail and like i said it's free and super comfy highly recommend 10 out of 10 there's a video too so that way if you get uncomfortable or unsure how to do something there is a video that goes along with it Definitely great for um, dipping your toe into the sewing realm for the first time. And um, if you're if you have problems with things being tight across your midsection, you could always use a comfier or a wider elastic. Wider elastic usually distributes the weight a little better. So that way you're not putting so much pressure on one spot. So you could always, you know, reach out and I can help you make adjustments to patterns. So that way that they're more comfortable. But there are tons of really cute pajama style ones out there. She does this like Frenchy nightgown too, but that one's on her Patreon. Um, 
and it has, like I said, this Grecian goddess vibe, and there's a robe that goes with it too. So cute. So cute. And I'm just doing a little smattering of dots across the bottom, just in case it winds up showing. Better safe than sorry. I've actually made, the year before last, I did a whole challenge where I only, every month I took one Disney villain and I made something from upcycled materials. So that's bed sheets, that's curtains, that's blankets, that you know, any, any textile that I could purchase from a like used shop. And I did, oh, 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 also tablecloths. Tablecloths are a favorite of mine for like bottom weight fabric. Bottom weight just means that it's heavy, like canvas. And oh, you know what? I think I'm going to do some big dots down here at the bottom. Let me do this little, do this one a little differently. And then do tiny little dots up at the top. And let's see, I did an Ursula from Bed Sheets, and it had like this cute little strapless number. It was from a big four pattern. Um, I'm I'm I know it's up on my Instagram somewhere. And I did a Captain Hook from a tablecloth. Oh, I loved that one. That one was favorite. And I had enough of that left over that I did a Dr. Facilier as well. I did a sheath sheer con dress. Oh, that one was so awesome. I had to paint the fabric on that. That's actually where what this is left over from. This is from when I did that sheer con dress and I had to paint the fabric because it was just like an orange bed sheet, but it had no print or design on it. And I was like, how do I make this sheer con? So, you know, step one for crafting, never throw anything out. It'll always come in handy. Sometime, somewhere, you never know. All right. Let's see, I also did a Steampunk Maleficent. And it was made from a purple bed sheet, a pink bed sheet, and like this black satin striped bed sheet. And that came out so amazing that I actually wore that one to like an anime day at a local library and people wanted pictures with me because I looked so awesome. It was really cool. I love being photographed. It's my favorite thing when I go into the theme parks dressed up is when families stop me for photos. Like, can I take a picture with you? And I'm like, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I'll go for it. You want to shoot a dancing reel? Cool, we'll do that too. Whatever you want, kids. Whatever you want. Let's see. I don't know what I want to do with this one. Mm, maybe I'll do like a, a dark tip. I don't think I've done one where I've done the tip super dark. Now, Universal, that happens a lot less than at Disney because for whatever reason, when you're at Disney, all of the people there think the guests are part of your of their entertainment too. So when I go for like Dapper Day, which is when you go into the parks dressed in like 1950s fashion, which is sort of what got me started in uh, dressing up in the parks to start with was this phenomenon. You can kind of check that out at DapperDay.com or you can join the group, the D3 Darlins on Facebook, it stands for Disney Dapper Darlin. It's our main group. It's my sewing group. We all meet up and some of them buy, you know, purchase things instead of sewing their own. But, you know, it's all about the fun. It's all about the fun. No shade one way or the other. We're just here to have a good time. And we also have the Star Steppin, no G, Darlins for the Universal because that's a star step, not a Disney bound. Because a lot of the times we like to frame our outfits around characters from that place. So for Disney, you might have the princesses. I like to do the villains because I super love the villains. And you couldn't have a good story without the villains. Like, like how boring would Cinderella be if her stepmother was like a sweetheart? There would be nothing to know about.
they drive the story. They give the protagonist a chance to shine. There we go. I also did like a 1920s uh, Hades, which was really cool. And that one was from curtains and a tablecloth. Because I had mis I had mixed matching textures and it was sort of did a diagonal. So it looked like his sash. So it worked out great as a concept. Let's see, what do I want to do for this one? I think for this one, I'm going to do just some random lines. I'm not going all the way up or all the way down. The villains are so cool. Like, and I know that like the DC villain or DC films and whatnot don't get like a lot of love at the box office, but there's one thing you can say for them. DC villains are memorable. Like they are super memorable. Green Goblin from Spider-Man, Penguin, like Batman alone, the number of villains that exist in Batman, even just beyond Joker, there's just so many, they have so much variety. I loved watching the video games be played and you could hear all the stories that go along with it. It's sort of like, built a fundamental love of the DC characters. And I, I'm aware this is a super unpopular opinion, but I love them. They are great. The Marvel villains, you know what's terrible is I can almost never remember their names, ever. Like they're great. I mean, in this in the context of the story, you know they exist. They do things, they they are they are a story mechanic, but at the end of the movie, all you really remember are the heroes. Which is fine, I guess, but you know. I'm the villains matter. The villains matter. I think my favorite villain is 100% the Queen of Hearts. Yes. Okay, yes. I don't like it when the villains turn hero or even when they have like an ambiguous, um, like when, when the problem in the story isn't like a person or a defined hero or villain. It's like a situation is the enemy instead of an actual enemy. No. I want a real enemy. Give me someone to hate. Give me someone I want to hate. Love to hate. Like Cruella de Vil. They did so good with her. I hate her guts. I hate her guts. And that's, and it's good because it means they defined her story well enough to hate her. Like if you've got like a, a limp dick villain, like then you've got a limp dick hero. Like that says a lot about your hero. A lackluster villain means a lackluster hero. They can't shine if the villain isn't truly villainous. Yes! Yes! And I get that there are horrible situations in the world, but we don't need to bring all of the real world into our into our entertainment. We we can have some basic villainy and just enjoy it for what it is. Sometimes it's nice just to simplify it down into something small. Just give it a lot of attitude while you do it. Lots of attitude. Did you watch the it's true. The real world probably doesn't usually end well. Like, I would say that, you know, most times things are not going to go the hero's way, the protagonist's way. They're going to, the world's going to do what the world wants to do, whether, you know, you like it or don't like it. I think for this one, I'm going to do some little, like a little star thing and then some dots up at the top. and maybe like some dark black down at the base. I haven't done any like that. 
where, where the base is super dark. That could be fun. That could be different. When I go to touch these later, I'm going to pay for this choice because fabric paint does not dry on plastic. But that's okay. I can always wipe it down. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely team bring back real villains. Like I was um, donating blood today. I donate bread, blood fairly regularly. And while I do it, I like to watch like something. I stream something on Disney Plus, you know, keep myself entertained. It's one of the few things that seems to work all right on a sometimes poor internet connection in a public setting. And I was watching Turning Red. It's a Pixar film, and I'm not usually a big Pixar fan, but I've been trying to grow a little bit, be a little more open-minded with animation studios and styles. Um, I'm very big, I prefer hand-drawn animation, so I'm not big on a lot of the new styles and direct result. I'm not a big fan of Pixar. But I wanted to give it a chance because I had seen that there was, whenever a movie generates hate, like, for pro being progressive, it makes me want to watch it. Because, like, what is so cool about this? I want to know. What is the secret? And, you know, it was a cute movie. It was cute. Um, there are things in there that I wish weren't normalized. Like, the concept of, um, you know, this horrible thing happened to this little girl in her life. And she wasn't comfortable sharing it with her mom. Like, that's sad. Like, that shouldn't be a thing. It's a thing I relate to in some ways, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be something that's relatable. And then they go on to show that it's sort of like a generational thing that has occurred. And that's kind of sad. Like, this whole generation, this concept of, well, this is a thing that happened to me, and this is how my mom handled it, so that's how I'm going to handle it, is, oh, did I just do... No, I did a white one. Uh, let's see. What about, let's do, let's do another stripe, another um, spider web one. A couple that are a little more complex. Rinse off my brush. It got a little bit too much paint on it. I haven't seen the new live action Ariel yet. It's on my to-do list. I want to see it. I'm so excited for that. I heard some of the soundtrack and it is beautiful. And the trailers look so amazing. It's just because an infectionary it doesn't ever feel well enough to go. It's one of those things where I'd have to go by myself, which isn't all that exciting as a concept. See, I have heard it is amazing. Um, there, I know that there was a lot of like hate leading up to it because you know she's not a redhead and and she's not white. But who cares? I mean, this is a space on a fairy tale that was written, you know, umpteenth years ago. Like, who cares? Like, it's about a mermaid. Yeah, yeah. And for some things, I agree. Like, live-action animal movies don't make sense to me. Like, a live-action Lion King. I didn't watch it, had no desire to see it, because that just, it would have just been CGI'd animals, and that feels weird. But, like, okay, so I, I don't, so I should skip it then. I shouldn't even try. I liked Aladdin. I did like Aladdin, the live action version. That was good. I actually preferred it to the animated one, which is insane considering I grew up with the animated one. Although I might be in the minority opinion on that one. I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't think too many of my friends chose to go see that. I don't think it was just, just wasn't high on their hit list. 
It was, and the costumes were so pretty. They actually updated the costumes for the meet and greet in the park to kind of mix the styles together from the live action with the animated to give like the style of them. And it, it was really well done. I actually really enjoyed the Beauty and the Beast one. I really enjoyed that one, but I also have a major love affair with Emma Watson. Like, I love her. I will watch anything that she is in. Um, when she did Perks of a Wallflower, I actually cut my hair short to one inch all the way around because I was so, like, inspired. I loved it. There are not a lot of pictures of that, um, of what that looked like, just because it took, it didn't take very long for my hair to outgrow it, but I loved it. I really love my hair short. I have been keeping it long for Infectionary, but I am trying to get him onto the idea that, you know, it's my hair. It's my hair. Do what I want with it. My hair is too long for me at the moment too. It is uh, at cleavage level. My hair is at cleavage level. And that is uncomfortable because I first had mentioned cleavage level. It gets right in, down in there. And I live in Florida, so that's just kind of gross. I do like it a little bit longer only for when I do victory rolls. So I've got enough, cause my hair is really thin. It's really, really thin. It's hard to style and do stuff with. I have to do a lot of hair folding techniques. Oh, you've got thick hair. I'm so jealous. I wish my hair had body and volume, but I probably wouldn't want it long either if my hair was that, was that thick. My mom's hair is really thick and she keeps it probably only about eight inches long. It's not much longer than a bob. I think I want a few of these spider webs to dip a little lower than some of the previous ones. I think I'll go a little bit further in. Let it be a little bit messy. But yeah, yeah, heavy hair is not fun. Like even as thin as mine is right now, um, because it's long, it's it feels heavy to me compared to what it has been in the past. Cause I used to keep my hair at about chin length. Like that was, that's when it looks like the healthiest, has the most body, has the most shine, doesn't have as many split ends. My hair breaks super easy. And a lot of the times the hairstyles I achieve for my pinup photos, I achieve with sponges. I have to use a lot of hair sponges in my hair because it just doesn't naturally have enough body. And that's even with using crap ton of pomade and dry shampoo, even teasing it a little bit. Although that, whenever I tease my hair, it sort of makes it rip out whenever I go to brush it out later. It's awful. Like vintage hair for my hair is hard. So I usually resort to like hair folding. You know, these flowers kind of make me think of like those fortune cookies that you would do with your fingers. Which is sort of fun in a way. And kind of, I kind of like the idea. I really, really like the idea of like writing words of inspiration in the inside of a flower. Like maybe I'll do that for like a pride one. That could be really fun. A little fun activity. Like words of affirmation written into my accessory. Like, oh, hey, I'm feeling kind of down today. Let me look at all these great things that I feel about myself or should feel about myself. I had a, a moment of like personal weakness yesterday when I was trying to sketch out my Frankenstein and it wasn't coming out right. And I was just so disappointed, legit cried, legit cried. So when you see whatever it is I come up with for tomorrow, know that their tears literally went into it.
it's all right though it's all right you know just there's good art comes from a little bit of a little bit of adversity and just facing a little bit of adversity let's see what do i want to do for this one let's do let's do some more stripes i'll outline the flower Infectionary was cheering me up with some like random anime that has like a debutante ball scene. He was like, look, look, come look, get some ideas for a new costume. Get some ideas, get some ideas. Restart the generational like boost with your brain. You know, creative juices, do it. I was like, okay, okay. It was actually like exactly what I needed. It was perfect. I really lucked out there are, I really lucked out with him. He's, he's great. I couldn't imagine like a life without a minute. One of the, um, the outfits that I'm going to work on, maybe, maybe on stream. I don't know. Like I said, it depends on how well that works. I'll do a test run with my with my camera and see what that looks like, what it sounds like when I try to do sewing on stream. I, I really just don't want, because my machine is thunderously loud, right? Um, so I already know it won't be a thing where I can sew and talk at the same time. Uh, but I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see. I'll have to experiment and play with it a little bit. It's going to slow down my sewing. It's like it's always easier to sew without people watching you. But it's so much a part of who I am. I'd love to share that too. And maybe demystify like a lot of the, a lot of my friends are always like, how do you sew so fast? And I was like, eh, it's not really all that's sewing all that fast. You only just see like X, Y, and Z on the screen. You don't see what's happening. You just see the end result. You have no idea how long this has taken me to plan it out, to cut it out, to do the actual construction. I mean, I've been told I'm pretty fast anyways, but you know, there's a difference between being pretty fast and oh my God, how did you manage this? I definitely want to demystify like this concept of, oh, she can sew anything so quickly. No, not anything, just some things. Some things take just as long as anybody else. Especially if it's a super like fitted garment. Cause well, bodies are weird. Like there's no such thing as a standard body. Um, things that have to fit around a bust. Like, I don't know about you, but the bust is not the same every day. Sometimes you wake up and it's just like, oh, hey, <laughs> you are extra there today. Maybe I need a different bra. And the same thing happens with your clothing garments. Like, some days you need more ease. You need more room. The body is not the same, even this, you know, from day to day. So sewing to fit your body. Yeah, yeah. Buying ready to wear is horrible experience. It's horrible. Like, I don't even if you were like exactly who the industry was designing their clothes for, it's, it would still never fit right. Somehow it would just never fit right. Yes. I am with you a hundred percent, Telly. So I am five, three, so I'm not much taller than you. I'm, I'm pretty short. And my waist, my bust and my hips and my butt are all different sizes. When I sew, instead of doing a full bust adjustment, I have to do a full butt adjustment, like a butt adjustment. There is so much butt going on there. It's way too round. I even had it when I was grossly underweight as a kid. They had marked me medically as failure to thrive for most of my life. And even when I was grossly underweight, I had this astronomical butt to the point where people were asking me what my you know, if I really was like all white, like people are rude. 
people are rude. They'll ask all sorts of insensitive things because they feel like they're entitled to the answers. Yes, yes. And I wish that girls' pants were designed or measured the same way as men's are, just like waist and length. And then just have it be made of something slightly stretchy so that way it can go around everybody's shape. I hate the ready-to-wear industry. And it's so toxic. Textile waste is so massive. Same. It's so much easier to fit something as long as it fits at your waist. If it's a little loose, then you know it's going to fit everywhere else without a whole lot of trauma. 100% with you. That is the biggest reason why I love working with vintage patterns. Because the, the fit and flare style kind of originated there. I don't know how I want to do this one. I'm undecided. I think I'm just going to bring a little from the tip in. Nothing too crazy on this one. I think this one's going to be a little more low-key. We're going to let this one be a little more green. Yes! Um, the pattern designer I really like has a dress called the, the Popover. And it is sort of like, and this is going to sound stupid, but it's sort of like a tent, right? It's only semi-fitted in the bust, and it's very, very loose, like a trapeze. And you're designed to wear it with either a belt, or you can put like elastic, like an elastic casing in it, or you can do like shirring in there, so that way it's fitted, but it's still super stretchy, but it still gives you like a defined waist. And I love that as a style. I did one as a swimsuit cover-up earlier this year. And that was from like the Gertie Sews Jiffy Dresses book, which I have only made two out of the five dresses in there. I did a patio dress from there. It's sort of like a tiered skirt with a collar. And I wore it for the father-daughter dance I took my father-in-law to because he is like the best guy. Like he is the best guy. So awesome. I didn't have like... A great relationship with my own dad wasn't really involved in my life so very much not that not that he was like a bad person or anything I just didn't know him you know for clarification I just didn't really know him and he didn't really know me and we didn't have a lot that we could connect on um, but my father-in-law is super awesome I cannot wait for Father's Day this year I don't know what I'm doing yet but it'll probably be something fishing related um, not the activity because I haven't done it in so long. I stink at it, like horribly stink at it. I don't even know if I still even remember how to bait a hook. Uh, cause I would be used to like live bait, but, um, maybe I'll make something. I painted him something as like a memory painting a few years ago that had like, you know, a father and a daughter like fishing on a dock at sunset and I love that piece so much it's still a favorite but I need to make something new maybe I'll paint like a paint do a painting of like a bass like a giant bass with like glittery scales and you know have it be like the fish the the big fish story or something we'll see I haven't I haven't I haven't worked out the concept yet But the idea and the intent is there. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll paint a boat. Maybe I'll paint a boat. That could be fun, like a boat at sunset. All right. Let's see. What about... What about some stripes? What about some stripes? I don't know why I'm so obsessed with like black and white stripes. I think it comes from watching Sleepy Hollow and Christina Ritchie's dress at the end. 
I want to recreate that. That is a goal. That is a goal for next year. I'm marking that as a goal. I want to do the sleepy hollow dress. That black and white dress at the end is just everything. It's everything, Telly. I want it. Oh, so cute. I have an insane fascination with um, vintage garments. Um, like, I need help. <laughs> I need help. I want all of them. They're just so good. It it is such an amazing costume piece. Oh, except for me, it wouldn't be a costume. It would be like regular attire, and I would wear it to work because I have trained my my the office staff to just expect that I'm going to wear something weird. Like they know this. I've wore the 18th century dress, uh, the skirt part of it, to work this week, and I was like, yeah, what well, this is just going to be a thing that's going to happen. You're going to get used to seeing this. They don't even bat an eye anymore at it. They're like, oh, okay. Now it's like if they see me wearing jeans, they're like, are you okay? Like, do we need to send flowers? Who has died? What's going on with you? Do you need therapy? Let's go to therapy. Let's get that done. And that's our city manager. Like, he's so awesome. Like, it's expected that I'm going to wear something odd. And I love doing it. Not just because it's, you know, me and I love it, but because it makes my office smile. Like it, like uh, the silly outfit. Like I know you can't see what I'm wearing right now, but I'm wearing my, this giant unicorn hat that has a horn sewn onto it. And I made a mane and a whole nine yards. I wore this to work on Thursday and my supervisor just couldn't stop smiling. Every time she looked at me, she smiled. And I love that. I love that so much. Like that is the goal. That is the goal, always. Like, who can I make smile today? Did I make someone smile? No, we need to remedy this. All right, let's see. What do I want to do next? Let's do another dark centered one. Just very dark at the center. And like I said, I'm not thinking too hard about this or just, I'm just kind of quick throwing the paint down there. Yes, exactly. If I can encourage one person to wear something besides a neutral color and like expand their, their comfort zone, then go, go them, go them. I went to a workshop yesterday and <laughs> I had a good laugh because um, there was about 120 people in the room, but only two of us were wearing bright colors. Like I had my rainbow pencil skirt on that was made of colored pencils. Like it was a pun. It's a pencil pencil skirt. And yes, that was done intentionally. And yes, Infectionary thought it was stupid, but you know what? It's dope and it's colorful and it's so me. It's not even funny. It's like the epitome of a mom joke. And this one other person was wearing this bright red ruffly shirt with red chiffon ruffles all around the neck. Think like the, the Wednesday Raven dress, but just as a top and in bright red, very Lydia deep. And I was asking her, I was like, you know, what's your background? What did you go to school for? And she goes, well, I, w I was in school for special education. And I was like, oh, so you were going to be a teacher too. And we realized that between the two of us, we were the only ones who had an education background, but we're also in bright colors, but everyone else was in navy and tan, lots of black. And I was like, no, I could never do it. It's way too boring. Like my personality cannot be contained in a black suit. Don't do this to me. I'm too colorful to contain.
And I always like to encourage people to be brave, to be their most authentic self, whatever that means for them. Like that's important. People need the room to be themselves. And if that means, you know, flouting a social office norm, then so be it. All right, but that's a personal choice though, right? It's not like because you have to. It's because you want it to be that color, I hope. If not, we, you and I need to get together and talk about this. If it's not a personal choice and you're only doing this because you have to do it that way, then we, we need to talk. Good. As long as it's what you want, though. As long as it's what you want, what feels like you. That is the point. Whatever feels like you. For me, what I do is I have, uh, because I have a very small closet, very, very small closet, um, it's only like three feet wide and I have to share it. So I only put, I, I have color capsules. I have a capsule wardrobe and there are colors specific to each season. So for spring, I pull out my aquas, my lavenders, my navies, um, and like light gray, like those are my spring colors. So everything that I'll wear for that season will be mixed in with those colors. So that way I can mix and match and wear more pieces together. And then I won't have to worry about whether or not they're gonna match. And then for spring, I do pink, cyan, yellow and sort of like a grass green and the reason I do that is so when pride comes all of my pansexual colors are like right there at the forefront so that way I can like really send my message like hey I am me and it's very intentional I live in a very conservative area even for the state of Florida and so I have been slowly trying to educate the local community about different religions because I am probably the only Jew for like 30 miles and um, different gender identities and whatnot, just so that way they can kind of grow with the times and not be so backwards because we do have a problem with that in the state of Florida. And I am slowly working to correct my little corner of the world, so if I can leave it a little better. I don't know what I want to do with this one yet. Uh, maybe this one will do this little stars. I'll do the little stars on this one. Oh, I didn't finish the colors. So for fall, it is sort of like a red, a plum, and like a deep green, a deep forest green, and a like a harvest yellow. And I threw red in there, even though I hate the color red. It's a very, to me, reads as a very negative color but I evidently look spectacular in it and I never thought I did. So I did work it in there as like a body positivity thing. Yes, yes. We do unfortunately have a fair amount of that. So I do work at it pretty diligently. I, I want to improve the area I live. Uh, I think for this one, let's, let's go with dots for this one. I haven't done dots in a little bit. Just dots, nothing too crazy. The petal is bent. There we go. All 
I had seen somebody yesterday who had something written in their window that kind of surprised me. They had said, um, buying guns is easy because buying the senator and the governor is easy too. And I was like, well, that's pretty like profound. Also, you know, you're pretty, pretty brave to stick that on your window in Lake County where vandalism because you disagree is so much a thing. There are, there are times when even as like being a member of the Jewish community, I've been afraid to put um, my menorah in the window or fly a Hanukkah flag during, during the season because, you know, you never know who's going to be that one jerk who's going to want to egg your house. I mean, especially with as expensive as eggs are, you'd think that'd be less of a thing. But vandalism, because you're different, is very much, like, alive in the state of Florida. And it's very sad and a tiny bit terrifying, depending on where you are in the minority spectrum. I almost wonder if I should wait to paint the rest of these and see if I can make do with what I already have. So I think I'm going to put a temporary hold on the painting of these. I'm going to set them aside just in case I don't need to paint all of them. And I was just making sure that my surface where I had paint was dry so that way when I go to start stringing these things together. I'm not making a big awful mess. So I'm gonna move my paint out of the way and I'm gonna do a little bit of prep work. I know I wanna... Oh, I had heard that that was a thing over there. I got my first tattoo and, I, and Infectionary was telling me that if we went back overseas that I might wanna cover it up. Um, for me, it's on my ankle so it wouldn't be a big deal to wear socks but I still think that's very strange as like a concept uh, business professionals here face backlash with tattoos as well yes and they are so common it's weird that there would be like this stigma attached to them all right, I'm cutting off the ring part of this because I'm going to use glue to attach it into some of my flowers. And I think that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and set it aside. I'm going to do a few more. I've got four more rings. I have a couple on a couple of other colors, but they don't fit my color scheme and I don't have any spray paint for that. So I'm not going to paint them to make them fit. I'm going to just make do with the few that I do have and have it as like a design feature. Ah, oh, that is awful. I am so sorry. I live next to probably like the world's largest retirement community. And you can only imagine what that entails. Like the elderly of the United States all move within like a two mile radius of my house. So all of the conservative ideas, concepts and beliefs that they have held since, you know, 19... 51 and you know older is alive and well locally and i think that's part of the reason why we experience such aggressive conservatism All right, and just snip this last one. And then I'm going to go ahead and measure my fishing wire and start stringing things in. I'm not going to do my spiders until absolutely last, but I wanted to have them cut. 
oh, I'm, I'm glad that you're going to be moving to an area that makes you feel more comfortable and accepted. I'm excited for you. That is amazing. All right. So I want to, for me, I want to make sure that my string is long enough that I can knot it off and it winds up hitting kind of close to my belly button. So I'm going to do like 50 inches. So I'm going to measure out 50 inches of fishing line. Ah, I lost hold of it. And this is just like a rough measurement. It doesn't have to be anything exact. This is a necklace. As long as it's wide enough that it goes over your head, and it lays where you want it to lay, then it's good. Like this is, there's nothing scientific about this measurement. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and string one bead on before I, I do anything else. So that way I've got a knot on one end. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and knot it in place with a nice long tail. It wasn't quite as long as I wanted. Redo, redo, repeat. There we go. That's a little better. I want at least like two or three inches extra on the tail. And I'm going to knot this a few times. And fish it through one more time for one more knot through the loop. Because I want, this is going to be what's going to, as I'm stringing them, this is what's going to stop it from sliding off the edge. This is my bumper. Okay, so I've got, I've got it all knotted on there. And I've got a nice little long tail. All right, and now I'm going to grab my needle. Now, like I said at the beginning, you want to make sure that your needle is, has a wide enough hole head for the the fishing line to go through but you also need the metal part to be narrow enough to go through your bead so for this reason alone I don't recommend seed beads for this project because you'll have a difficult time getting fishing line through something that a seed bead could go through and I don't want to start with a flower right away I'm going to use I had some leftover little beads from a project that I made from I, when I went to London, I had all my colors were like aqua and um, gray and whatnot. So I had gotten this really pretty like mint colored scarf, but I wanted to put pearls on it. I wanted it to be fancy. Like I was, this was a special trip for me. I wanted it to be nice. I wanted my clothing to be nice. I wanted everything to be pretty. So I had bought a ton of little pearlized beads that I had sewn onto the, um, onto the scarf just to give it a little bit of extra like flair and drama because I'm all about like visual flair on an ensemble and this was all kind of left over from that it's, it was in my like leftovers bin and a couple of these are the holes are not really good enough so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use all of these so some of these I'm going to be separating out as I go just because the hole isn't large enough for the needle I'm using Sad, but true. Okay, so I'm going to do like three beads and then I'm going to string my first flower. I'm going to try to do three beads anyway. I may get frustrated and just do two. Another um, tutorial I'd seen on this, they used uh, cut up straws as a spacer, because that's what we're doing is we're creating spacers so that way the, they don't stick too close together. All right, so I've got three little beads on there and now I'm gonna string in my first flower. All right, so I've got my first one and I'm gonna push it through 
the little opening there. And when you're doing this, obviously, you want to make sure all of your flowers go in in the same direction. So all of mine will be coming up to the bottom. And I've got a couple of different sizes, so I'm going to be mixing and matching these a little bit. And I do have some extra um, pearls on standby in case I don't have enough. And I've also got a thimble in case I run into trouble, like forcing it through the hole. I have a feeling that's gonna be the case with a lot of these because of the fishing line. In theory, I could just pick up and push it directly through the, through the fishing line, but I'm not confident in my ability to do that. Um, and it go through nicely. So that's the reason I'm use, still using a needle. Even though those holes are probably big enough that it, the fishing line could just go directly through. Probably gonna wish I had gone with spacers at this point because my flowers have a nice long plastic stem. I almost wonder if I'm gonna need a whole lot of spacers. So I've, I've put three in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try stringing the next flower and see what it looks like. A lot of crafting is wait and see what happens and see if you like the result and then continue on. The Oop, I came unthreaded, but we got the flower in there. And I think I may actually be able to skip spacers. So I think maybe I'll give it a try. Or actually maybe I'll just skip the needle. And just push my fingers through there. Because I really kind of want to use these. And if they wind up showing, they'd be a really cute little detail. It'll also keep them from being too light. Yep, trial and error. Everything is trial and error in crafting. You never know what's gonna work until you give it a try. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the next one on and see if I like the way that looks. Now the only thing with pushing the fishing line directly through is that I gotta feed a lot of it through before I can feel the difference between the plastic center, because my, my center pieces are really long, to find my thread. All right, so I think for me, I'm gonna stick like four or five little spacer beads and then put in the next flower and that's what's gonna be like the shape of my lay. And I think I'm gonna skip the needle. I don't think I need it. I think I can skip it. And I'm glad I didn't paint anymore. Somehow I think I'm not gonna need even as many as I painted, which is great because that means that I can make like a little flower detail to maybe go on top of my spider hat. And that would be super exciting. I love to accessorize. Like, I am totally here for that. And maybe even, like, cute little wrist cuff. Like, that could be cute. That could be a lot of fun. All right, now our next flower. And you could totally do this with like, um, I'm thinking of maybe like doing a pride version of this too. 
Yes, I love hair accessories. I love hair accessories. Um, at some point, maybe I'll do like a little Instagram reel of all of the hats I have hanging up on my wall, because all of my all of my ensembles have a corresponding hat. I have or hairpiece. Um, I am I love fascinators. I have a small obsession, okay, not a small, a very large obsession with fascinators. I love them. They are a great way to like clip in a little bit of excitement in your hair. Ooh, I love this little pearl detail in here. Oh, bows and clips. Yes. So my very first Dapper Day, I went with a group of girls and we were all Disney bounding different characters. I was Disney bounding Mary Poppins, so I made a cute little white bow with like red trim and cute little bits of lace on it. Like it was very like on character. And then I made one for each of the girls for the characters that they were dressing up as too. And we all had these beautiful little bows and oh, so pretty. Like I know you can't see this right yet, but the pearls kind of peep out in between. Oh. Oh, loving it, loving it. I love it when an idea comes together. Who knows, maybe I'll wind up with enough of these that I make a second lay. I'll mail it out to a lucky recipient. Maybe I'll make that like a giveaway on Patreon. Super fun, super fun. Or, you know, it could be another accessory for me. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but if I have as much left over as I think I might at this point, I think I will mail one out as a giveaway. Let's see, what are there some other things that I've made? Ooh, for that first Dapper Day, I also painted, um, repainted, recovered some leather shoes using leather paint. I did cute little red and white pinstripes. My feet were killing me. It was the first time I'd ever worn heels in the park. And I am now like an expert. I know how to shop for heels for theme parking now. Um, but that was rough, that first one. And now I even make like little gloves. I, I do a lot of accessories. A lot of the times if I'm re-wearing an outfit, I'll just double down on the accessories. Yes, uh, I walked barefoot in the Florida heat to my car because my feet were killing me so bad. Never again, never again. Um, Oh, what, what are they called? I lost the word. Um, they're like little mole strips that you put inside your on your shoes. So that way, mole skin, there we go. Mole skin, that was the word I was looking for. Mole skin is thy best friend for when you have to like do 30,000 steps in a pair of heels. And also you should start breaking in your dress shoes like six months before your event. Definitely do not wait to the last minute to start trying to figure out how to make your shoes comfortable. Oh yeah, I definitely probably made way too many of these flowers, but that's okay. That's okay. It'll, 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 I'll, I'll do a headpiece. I'll do a headpiece and maybe I'll still make a lay on top of it to, to give away. Um, the only thing I don't dress up with is I do not put nail polish on ever because my hands are always covered in paint. Uh, nail polish would be destroyed in like 10 seconds flat. It would never work out.
I'm trying to put like a slightly variation on the number of beads I'm using just so that way it doesn't wind up looking too uniform. And I do have two different sides of these little pearl beads. And so I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between them. Okay, now for a white one. Let's see, let's do polka dot. Ooh, yeah, spooky crown. Totally here for that. It actually almost makes me think of like a rain chain right now. Like the things you hang off the side of the roof to catch water. Oh, yeah. Ooh, a flower crown. Yes. We are doing that. We are totally doing that. It has been a minute since I'd made a flower crown. Put the cute little skulls in there. I like, I, as much as I'm terrified of spiders, I think part of the reason I like including them is to sort of warn people like, hey, I can be dangerous. I am gorgeous. I am pretty. I am soft and adorable, but I will 100% kick your ass. Give me a reason. Give me a reason. It's a natural warning for predators. Like, hey, I'm gonna fuck you up. Love it. Love it. Yes, that 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 is what we will do. We, we will, we will, we will do a flower crown. We will do a flower crown. We'll make that happen. I'll do some fun stuff with that. Maybe on another stream. Another casual day. Like, hey, come craft with me for a minute. Come see the weird inner workings of my brain as I try to struggle through this. <laughs> it's not a bias. It's an enjoyment. Not a bias. Exactly. Exactly. Do not test the limits of my rage. My rage is a powerful thing. Okay. Now for the next flower. We'll do the little stars one. I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised with how well the fabric paint wound up drying on the plastic. I may decide to like hit it with like a Lysol wipe or an alcohol swab just to make sure I don't experience any color runoff later. Because you know, this is Florida and weather happens and sweat happens because weather happens. And I'd hate to like ruin a dress because fabric paint came off on my ensemble. So there is some like little bit of care that's gonna happen after I finish this. And just, you know, for your reference too, like if you're using fabric paint and you hit your plastic part, you may wanna hit it with a, a wipe afterwards just to keep everything clean and tidy. And so you don't ruin something that you potentially spent hundreds of hours working on. Like 100% you know, caution. I am so excited with how this is turning out. I can, it's, it's wonderful to start to see something come together. Like, oh, so cool. I may wind up doing a little bit of extra like artwork on it after I'm done because I'm technically almost halfway done with my string here and I've still got like 15 flowers over there I definitely overdid it or maybe you don't know should I re-space them or is the spacing good what do you think should I put them closer together
to use up more of the flowers or accept that I'm now committing to a second project. Okay, yeah, I'll leave it as it is. I always like to like panel my ideas out there before I commit to something sometimes. Um, I like to do like sometimes this or that as an Instagram story on occasion when I'm trying to figure out what pattern to use a fabric for. Like jury it out there. I need help deciding. Help me. True. Yes. Yes. Very true. Very true. Would hate to spoil all of the work. Facts. That is a great way to look at it. And I, I'm not sure if you were in on it at the very beginning, but the reason I chose lilies is because it is traditionally a flower seen at funerals. And I kind of thought that would be like a cool little segue into what it was I was trying to accomplish with my look here with my monster on vacation. It's like I'm on vacation, but like I said, I will still fuck you up. I am already in mourning. I'm prepared. The flowers are ready. I will drape these on your grave. Let's see what other fun accessories. Oh yeah, a little costume Easter egg. I love costume Easter eggs. I have a friend who literally puts a skull on everything she makes, even if it's a hidden skull, because she also likes to remind people that she is dangerous. Um, she had tagged me in a reel from on Pink Witches Day where she had worn like a pink skeleton thing over top of her dress. And I was using my dual wielding wands to like play her bongos. Or zongos as bongos, if you catch my meaning. And she had retagged me in it, and I was like, my friends are the best. We are so silly. There is almost nothing better than just going nuts in a park with your besties. And the same way that I've got my office people trained, uh, all of like the Starbuckses between here and there know me and they just don't question it when I wear a crazy outfit. They're just like, okay, Emmy's in the building. She's going someplace. We've got to hurry up with her drink or she's going to kill us. Not really though. I'm really super nice to, to people that are serving me or helping me with something, but they like to say that in, as a joke, like she's here. The queen is in the building. Respect. The same thing happens when I go into Joanne Fabrics. Our, uh, we don't have a lot of fabric stores locally, so we're kind of stuck with like chain fabric stores. And they all know me and they're like, what is she working on now? What is she doing? Do all the parks. I want to do all the Disney parks. I need to go to Shanghai. I need to go to Tokyo. I need to go to Paris. I need to go to... I've already done Anaheim. I done, I done Disneyland. And oddly enough, I did Disneyland because I missed my layover flight from Orlando to California or to um, LAX to go on to Sydney. So in the day I lost in California, I went to Anaheim on a whim so I did not have any of the Disney stuff. It was so weird to experience Disney unprepared. I was not ready and I need to go back and do it right. But yeah, I, I want I want to do all oh and Hong, Hong Kong too. Hong Kong. Oh, so pretty. 
The parks are so cool. I could fangirl over theme parks like all day long. Because amusement parks and theme parks are different. They are very different. Like a theme park should transport you. You should not feel like you are in your regular humdrum life anymore. You should feel like like you're in a whole different universe. If they if you don't feel like you're someplace else, it's not been done right. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my goodness. So awesome. There is not much that is more interesting than Disney food. Like, Disney does snacks so well. They know exactly what you what to give you to um, make you want to drink more or eat more. Like, they pump smells into the air. Like, the smell of popcorn, yes, it's there. But they pump the smell of it into the air to make you want it more. And, you know, because you've got popcorn and you've got the salt and then you're thirsty and you need a good refreshing Coke to go with it. Like, it's it's very well done. Very, I, I can't even I can't even complain about it. They they just they know they know their audience. They know their audience, and especially when you make it a cool color or a cool shape on top of it, like they've got a ton of glowing drinks in the Avatar area of Animal Kingdom, and Animal Kingdom is my favorite park, not just because I am very eco conscious and all you know ticket proceeds go to the conservation funds but they have a bunch of really cool like glow-in-the-dark drinks and there's a lot of like um phosphorant type experiences where everything glows in the dark it's so pretty uh epcot is great um for eating around the world especially if you come in like fall when they're doing their food and wine festival and they don't have just like your standard the standard like 12 countries in their world showcase then they have a bunch of little side booths too and you can experience food from all over and the fun thing with epcot i mean fact check me at some point if this is not true anymore but it used to be that to work in that particular world showcase, you had to be from that country. So everything was a very super authentic experience. Whether or not that's true anymore, I couldn't say. I'd have to, you know, do a little deep dive and re-research to see if that's still true. Yes, so Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party is the best. It's the one they have at Walt Disney World. The Oogie Boogie Bash is okay, but it's more like an after hours event. But Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party has an epic parade. Like the um, the guy from Sleepy Hollow on the horse, he runs down like the center of Main Street for the parade route. And oh, it's just the music. It's stuck in your head for days. It's an earworm and I love it. So crazy cool. Christmas is okay. The Christmas event is all right, but it's just not as great as Halloween. The parade, the fireworks, the stage show, the trick or the trick or treat candy spots. Like you, for the Christmas event, you get like hot cocoa or something such as like your treat, because the the uh, the 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 holiday events are a separate ticket than like the day parks. So, like, they kick the regular people out at, like, 6 o'clock, and then it's only the special event tickets from, like, 6 to midnight. The hours may be different now. I, have, I, didn't, I haven't gone since 2019, and my soul is so sad. The last time I went, I went as a gender-bent oogie boogie, and it was amazing. Oh, that was the thing with 400 hand-pounded grommets. My neighbors probably thought I was killing Infectionary just from the pounding of the hammer over and over and over again.
the Christmas event is nice. Like they each each one has like their own little set of pros and cons. And they also have special character meet and greets. Like at the Christmas one, you can meet the princesses and the princes. Um, they're usually only out together during Valentine's Day. And at a couple of like the, the character meals. But for Christmas, they usually come out together. And then you can see usually like um, some, some specialty characters. The villains come out for... The Halloween party and that is epic oh yeah the decorating is so awesome for both and they I had a friend who worked on the decorating crew and they really do do that in like the span of 24 hours actually it's a little less than that but you know it really is Halloween one day Christmas the next and they do a whole like um video segment on Disney plus about it which is actually super interesting. I also love the merchandise that they sell. Oh, this one's not spaced quite enough. Let me go back. I need to add more beads on that one. It's too close together. There's this part of the the Halloween parade that I can even cluck along with like Henrietta. And it, it's so horrible, but I love it. I love I love the music from the parade. My coworkers start listening to it like July 5th. Like Halloween is never far from my heart. I already have my Halloween decorations out and ready to go up. Like I'm waiting. I've been waiting since halfway to Halloween on 420. Like, I'm ready. Bring me the Halloween. Halloween is life. And especially since they don't have, you guys don't do Halloween really much over there. It would be like an epic experience. I wonder if the other foreign parks do much with Halloween. I've, I've never really looked into it or thought about it, but if Halloween isn't a big deal overseas, I don't imagine that Paris does a lot for it and probably not in Tokyo, Shanghai, or um, Hong Kong. I used to be... Oh, Fright Nights. We uh, Universal Studios here does Halloween Horror Nights. And one of the... The, the theme for the thing I'm doing tomorrow is based on Halloween Horror Nights at Home. It's a, a fan-related event, but it's a fan-related event that uh, funds the Trevor Project. So it's sort of like Halloween Horror Nights in association with Pride, and I'm so excited. I don't do scary really well. Oh, they do a Christmas one too, huh? Oh, that, that's really pretty. So I have to ask, I have to ask, because the seasons are backwards. Does that mean that you're in like spring or summer when Christmas comes? And how does that impact your decorations? Like, is it like Florida where we put wrap lights on a palm tree? Like a tropical Christmas, Christmas in the ocean? summer that's what i thought santa in like his bathing suit and surfboard that's very much like on trend for florida i mean people buy fake christmas trees and a couple buy like imported real christmas trees they get you know shipped down from further north but you know it's very tropey to have like a palm tree christmas tree in florida Holy crap! Yeah, I'd say that's summer. That is 100% summer. Oh my god. So you really do go swimming at Christmas. We've done that at Florida. in Florida. I've gone to the beach on Christmas Day before. It's beginning progressively colder here, though. Um, every year, I feel like winter gets a little chillier, a little longer. 
but maybe I'm just getting older. But I, I have fond memories of, you know, having a swimming pool, like a little, little pop-up kid swimming pool as a kid and taking pictures, swim, uh, swimming on Christmas day or going to the beach or doing a picnic or a barbecue, barbecue Christmas. That is, I love that that is so synonymous with the concept that we have here in Florida. I, I see you. I, I understand your, I understand your frustration. Is it weird watching like the Christmas movies that go on and on and on about the snow? Like, is that weird for you too? Where they're like, that is not what we're experiencing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that happens a lot here too. Like you'll still, you know, your Christmas cards may still have like a frosted Christmas tree on it, but you know, you, you look outside and you're building a sandcastle kind of deal. Yes, those are super popular here. Or like flamingos dressed up as elves. There is a show on ABC that I absolutely love. It's called the The Great Christmas Light Fights, and they have and it's a, existentially a massive decorate outdoor decorating competition, and they have all these synchronized light displays. It's so pretty. Um, Hollywood Studios, or what used to be called MGM Studios for Disney, used to have something called the Osborne Spectacle of Lights. And it had, it was gorgeously timed to music, and it was so pretty, like, you, you and the whole theme, it was set up against what they called the Streets of New York, or the Streets of America, excuse me, the Streets of America. And... Oh, yeah, yeah, you are not going to do, like, hot food when it's already hot outside, 100%. Like, no, that's just not a thing. That's when you pull out things like potato salad, macaroni salad, weird stuff like that. Or maybe you guys have something different as a cold dish. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly like, like the same things that we would have at a barbecue for, like, for our 4th of July our Independence Day, very similar kind of concepts. So Telly, I managed to use all but three of the flowers I painted. So I guess that's gonna be more like a barrette or a hair clip. It's not gonna be enough for a flower crown unless I paint the rest of those. Cause I'm ready to knot off now. Prawns, that's, that's shrimp, right? Is that what prawns are? Shrimp? Are those, are those like terms used interchangeably? I don't do shellfish, so I'm not sure. Yes, hair peas, hair peas. I've already got a nice big alligator clip for it. And I'm just kind of knotting this off over here so it doesn't slide around when I go to it to knot the two ends together. So we've got kind of, oh, I should, oh, I should put one more so it's white. So it's not two, two aquas that match up together. Mm -mm, can't have that. Hmm, all right, I'll have to Google it at some point. I'm now curious. Difference between shrimp and prawn, is there one? Uh, there it is. Okay. Now, now we go. Oh, thank you, Infectionary. All right, now I'm just knotting these together. And you want this to be a really secure knot so that we don't have to worry about it coming loose and losing all of your hard work.
All right. Maybe I'll flip the camera around one so you can see my really great unicorn hat. Unicorn. With its little mane. And let's go ahead and see how this fits. Okay. Very nice. Oh, excited. It lands exactly where I want it to. Do I look spooky? I just need to add my spiders on now. Oh, thank you. Great. Push it back to my workspace. And put my, my hat back on. It's, it's what's storing my personality and my magic today. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. I love, we have warm weather in spring, but just only because that's, or in, um, in September, but it's only because it's Florida and it's still technically summer. All right, so now we are going to add our spiders. Ooh. And I'm gonna use gold standard E6000 to do this. And I wanna put it in a place where it makes sense or it doesn't like compete with anything else. So I may wanna do it on one of the ones that has a little less going on. So that way it kind of sticks and I might want to put it more at like the end. So it kind of hangs off the edge. Oh, I believe it. 104. Like it was, it was warm when I was there in March. Uh-oh. I can't get it open. Feed me. I can't get it open. may have to try my other tube that one may need pliers to get it open because e6000 it sticks to itself all right the reason i didn't want to use this one is because the opening is wider so it'll make a, a big mess oh yay infectionary saved me i like the smaller opening for this more control. Thank you. Saved by the hubby. Oh yeah, and it's literally like literally coming right out. Hot mess. Hot mess. Yes. Yes. Saved the day. All right, so I'm going to stick it right there. And I'm going to be careful to not touch the back of it with my fingers because this is very thin, like plasticky silk flower. So the glue is going to go through both sides. And to that end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Q-tip and press from one side and the other to secure it in place but to keep my fingers from touching it because once it dries on your fingers, it is a nightmare to correct and remove. You have to wait for it to dry and then there's rubbing alcohol involved and then you may lose a few layers of skin. Gross, no, we're not doing that. We are not here for that. So I've got one little cute little spider hanging out. Let's see, where's another good opportunity? Maybe this one, this looks like a good opportunity. Now, remember when you're using E6000 that you need to let this dry and cure for 24 hours before you actually wear this anywhere because otherwise it's not quite done setting and it will make everything will stick together. Loose hair, anything, you name it, it will stick. All right, and I'm going to put this here and I'm going to use my Q-tips to press it together in place. 
If you've got tweezers, that would do too. I just don't have those regularly right at my hand. Actually, I do on my sewing board. Um, I keep a lot of my utensils for sewing right there within reach. And one of the things I regularly have to do is rethread my serger. So I do actually have a pair of tweezers up there. And I'm just going to press down real quick. I am a super organized seamstress because I literally will have a panic attack if I'm looking for something and cannot find it. All right, and let's do another spider on this one. Like, like right off to the edge there. Ooh, you know what? There's some, I didn't even think about this, but there's a, a missed opportunity here. Like on the outside of these, I could put them here too and they would show really well. Let's try that. Oh yeah, totally here for that. Oop, I didn't put enough glue for it to really stick though. That is the only thing when you're working with plastic on plastic. Synthetics, they are a pain. I will probably have to touch some of this glue up again because it literally just came up on my finger. All right, we're gonna get a little bit more aggressive with this. And if need be, I can always go afterwards and do a quick little whip stitch on like a couple of the legs. And that's not a big deal either. That's probably a more secure method anyway, but I really wanted to avoid busting out like sewing tools for this. I wanted this to be a nice little quick project. Yeah, I know quick and me, not exactly synonymous, but you know, a girl can dream sometimes. A girl can dream. And I definitely encourage you to put freezer paper down if you are going to leave your E6000 open while you're in between using it, because it will dribble out and create a dirty, nasty mess. It will. This is just something to acknowledge. All right, and I got one more spider. And I think I'm going to put it here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cap off my, my glue. Yes, yes. Should always be secure. All right, and because I don't want the little glue spillage I had to wind up anywhere else, I am going to cut a small piece of freezer paper. So actually, I could just fold over that piece just so nothing else sticks to it. I don't want that to become part of my new lay. Like, that would be bad. All right, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to touch up a few of my painting areas now that I've got it all strung up together. I can see some areas that maybe need a little more detail work or a little more vibrancy. So I'm going to come back with my paint.
and I'm going to touch up a few areas from the back side where it shows a little more. And maybe add a few more details. Nothing too crazy. Just kind of doing some finishing moves. Because the outside is a little more visible than I was expecting it to be. So I want that to look just as good as the inside. So learning curve, um, if you're gonna paint these, maybe paint from the outside instead of the inside, because now we know. But I still love it, it still looks good. I'm still gonna wear it, I'm excited. Oh my God, this is so cool. So tell you, are you gonna make your own? I want to see if you do. Yes, I'm so happy with this. Sometimes a simple make can be so satisfying. And I'm just kind of touching up the edges. I'm not doing anything extreme or major here. Just a little bit of design. Um, emphasis. It's terrible. Yes, yes, make a hair piece, make one, make one. You should, I wanna see it. I love consuming creative content. It always makes me wanna make more. And that way I can share more with you all. And because I've got glue on here, I am trying to be careful about how I'm sliding this around because that will definitely be nowhere near dry yet. That and I have started painting the outsides of these. So if I touch something, I may wind up with paint on my hands. I mean, with more paint on my hands anyway. And not that it'll matter if it winds up like me getting moving paint around. Oh, I want to make that for a cosplay. I love the Sanderson sisters spell book. That is so cool. So did you use like leather or a combination of like clay? Like what kind of materials did you use? Yes, yes, yes. I want to see it. I want to see it. That would be so cool. I need the inspo. Maybe it'll give me the nudge I need to maybe finally launch a Discord. I want to share and receive creative inspiration. Clay, very nice. And was it um, like air modeling dry clay or did you have to bake it? Did you have access to a kiln? I um, did a lot of like ceramics when I was in high school and I've got a very, it's got ceramic and ceramic painting has like a special little place in my heart. I love using a kiln. I cannot throw pottery though. I cannot throw pottery. I can I can coil it, mold it in my hands, but I cannot use the potter's wheel. I can't do it. I don't have the skill. It's not one I ever perfected. Air dry clay, very nice, very nice. I had done um for Princess Peach. I had made a like alternative Princess Peach dress. It was all in like aqua colors and it had like a purple bustle and I had to use air modeling clay to do her brooch and earrings. Because, you know, finding a stone 
that's large enough for a cosplay piece that would actually show up would have been astronomical. But now I kind of want to see if I could make like a resin one and it'd be like wire wrapped and Princess Peach could be like a witch. And that would be so cool. Nice. I only have one. Um, it is a Haribo that is themed for the Cheshire Cat. But at one point, I do. it will have a companion on my other ankle, and it will be the Queen of Hearts. Because, you know, with my heart condition and her being my favorite villain, she's just, you know, a, a villain I feel very personally connected to. That, and she's the motherfucking queen. Like, she's one of the few villains that I particularly love because she can't be wrong because it's her domain and her domain is crazy. And I vibe with that so much. Like, you can't be queen if you're the absolute ruler of something. Like, you, or you can't be wrong. Excuse me, you're absolutely queen. You can't be wrong. That, that went all a little bit backwards on me. I have to be very careful because I am wearing a white shirt and I'm doing black paint. I am taking a gamble with my life. Ooh, 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 I'll take a look. Oh, I want to look now. I want to look now. Oh, Telly, that is epic. That is epic. Oh my goodness. Mm, if this was a podcast, that would be linked in my show notes. That is so great. Oh, love that. So cool. All right, we are almost finished up here, folks. I won't be able to put this on on me because it is wet but i will hang it for a minute so you can kind of see what it's looking like oh guys this is so special i just can't even okay this is where we're at very nice One of the things I want to do next year is I, like, I've got this huge, like, laundry list of projects that I want to do, right? Because I like, I like crossing over into a lot of crafting disciplines. And I'd seen the coolest leather stamper that is, looks like a dragon scale. And because I had done so much dragon scale stuff lately, I am hyper in the moment for um, making like a dragon scale bolero to go over that intense dragon scale dress I made earlier this year. But yes, yes, I still have flowers left. So there'll be probably like a cute little hair clip that goes with this, but I'm thinking there's going to be some vibing with something with that over there a little later. So definitely like stick around. I'll post announcements when I'm ready to do another little quick craft. But thank you for hanging out with me and have an excellent day.